with that tag. So yesterday was as wild and dramatic as I can remember. People were stopping me in the airport to ask my thoughts and these implications. So let's first set the table with the guys who got the tag, the, the non-exclusive, the exclusive, all of it. You know what happens Lamar Jackson, we'll dig in. Saquon Barkley gets tagged, well done by them. I give a lot of kudos to the Giants, Josh Jacobs, friend of the show, Tony Pollard, Evan Ingram, Deron Payne. So let's start with this Lamar Jackson one uh, because we have to dig into the situation a little bit more. It was you know, the tag wasn't a surprise, right? That's where things have been trending. The negotiation sort of broke down. But the non-exclusive tag is a little weird because it means that Lamar is given some freedom. He's given the ability to go and negotiate and try to reach a deal with somebody else. Uh, and then the Ravens have a chance to match. The Ravens, you know, having a little confidence here that they'll be able to match or that nobody's going to make that deal. And if Baltimore decides to let him walk, um, Lamar's new team has to send them two first round picks. So to me, this means, or what it should mean, is that there's a great chance that we see Lamar rock in another uniform next season, right? That is what would make sense. You know, if I'm the Panthers, for example, from the Panthers, if, I'd give up two first round picks in a heartbeat for a 26 year old Lamar Jackson. I would break him off. But to everybody's shock yesterday, there were these reports that, you know, a, a bunch of the teams, and you'll take a look here, I think Fields, uh, Field Yates tweeted them out, and I couldn't believe this. There's five teams that have been linked to Lamar that have come out and said, or at least told insiders, we're not pursuing negotiations with them almost immediately. Falcons, Dolphins, Panthers, Commanders, Raiders, as you're seeing here, they're out of the running. The Dolphins I get with Tua, but the all the four other ones, those question marks at the quarterback spot are staggering. They are glaring. And then it leaves the Jets, it leaves the Colts, it leaves the Texans. Um, as really the only obvious quarterback needy teams going into 2023. So it's really strange, and I don't want to conject, and there's a lot of that going on, and I'm really curious to get Chris Collins' or thoughts on it, but it, it's even weirder when you stop and think about the following. The Broncos, they were super willing to give away two first-rounders last year, and then some for Russell Wilson, who's nine years older than former MVP Lamar Jackson, right? And then they made him the second highest quarterback in the entire game. The Browns, who, I mean, they're an anomaly and everybody hates that they did this, and maybe that has something to do with this in the fallout with the guaranteed money and all of that, but the Browns were super willing to surrender, not one, not two, but three first round picks and gave the biggest fully guaranteed contract in history uh, to someone who, a lot of people don't think deserved it and certainly was in the midst of a huge uh, investigation. So you're telling me not one of those teams would be willing to give up two firsts for Lamar. I don't get it. Where are you, you guys at on this uh, at up and Adam show? And by the way, it's not out of the realm of possibility that one of these teams do step up and take a big swing for Lamar. And I think if anything yesterday taught us that, you know, there's a lot of theories out here. Maybe we should just let it play out and see how it goes. But something weird is going on. All I know is that I hope that the former MVP gets money uh, and is happy and gets the stuff that he uh, has earned and definitely deserves. But we'll talk about the collusion part, all of that as we see it unfold. Um, Giants quickly. Attaboy Giants. What am I supposed to say here? I, New York media, all of that. I worked in it for so long. Avoid the drama. That's what they did. There was all this lingering drama. Is Daniel Jones, are we going to put a ring on it? Yeah, they did. They said, baby, I love you. I'm going to K Jewelers and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And at least the next four years for $160 million. Uh, and they did it a little dramatically down to the wire, uh, as men always wait to the last minute to make things happen. But I do think um, that there's legitimate you know, questions he has to answer. They took a gamble. That's what it did. Like, first of all, they had to get a deal done with him so they could do what they wanted to do, which is smart and franchise Saquon Barkley. He was their MVP last season. He's what makes this thing go. Um, and, and he sort of ensures that this ensures that he's not going to get to go anywhere when they try to work out, out something long-term for him or get a win with him on this tag. Now, you know, $40 million sounds aggressive per year, but the, it's the, the state of the business. Like this is the going right people salary caps been ballooning. Um, and this is what guys get when they're up for an extension. You look at Derek Carr. He got nearly 40 million a year. Geno Smith got $35 million a year. And both of those guys are seven years 
older and have fewer wins than Daniel Jones. So there is a risk here and they're not paying him for what he did last year, what they saw last year. They're paying him for what they think he can do. They're saying, listen, this is a 25 year old quarterback. And I think he can, he can build off of this season with Dable. And yeah, there's an unknown collection of receivers, but he did without that led New York to its first playoff win in over a decade. So you're not, you're paying for what he could do for you. And Shane and Dayball, I thought well done by them. Uh, and they made it clear, shut up. We believe in our quarterback. We put a ring on it. And this Instagram official. Um, and I do want to say this, seeing that Daniel Jones um, made me realize this Brett Veach and the chiefs. And I've tweeted this yesterday. I was like, obviously, but what a masterclass by Veach and company with this Patrick Mahomes extension. Everyone, and if you look at the, you know the, the, what these quarterbacks are making, Kansas City has him locked up for nine years. Sure, he'll renegotiate at some point, and he should, but he's just the fifth highest paid quarterback in the league right now. Super Bowl champion two times, making $5 million more than Daniel Jones and Dak and Matthew Stafford. So there was a lot of, what are the Chiefs doing? Handing out half a billion dollars to a 25-year-old. Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to keep their roster intact or get anything done. Veach and Co. bet on what we all know is going to happen, the cap blowing up, and they look like geniuses now. So the moral of the story is pay your quarterbacks early. And I'm sure Chris Collinsworth coming up here will echo that sentiment of Burrow and the Bengals. Please, Bengals, go take care of Joe now. Go take care of Joe and get it done. Uh, and quickly. I don't have much to say about this, and I'm sure Chris does. Aaron Rodgers, this budding romance, this off-season fling going on between the Jets and Aaron. Uh, nothing is imminent, apparently. Rodgers is looking at his options. It's very, the, you know, the insiders yesterday were all, they're on a flight and there's graphics being made. And, and then like late last night, as I was getting back into town to turn into, oh, we don't, we don't really, it's kind of happening. It's kind of not, we don't know what's going to happen. So. Um, you know, with the Jets, Derek Carr was theirs if they wanted him. And it's nothing against Derek Carr. He's a good quarterback, and the Jets would be a playoff team with him. I'm saying that to you. That's what I think. But the point is that, you know, they could contend with Derek Carr under center. Was this a good idea to pass up on Derek Carr at the chance of upgrading yourself with Aaron Rodgers. You're not competing in this league to be good. You're competing to win it all. So I recognize that. The Jets certainly recognize that. And I would just say that I like that the Jets are even on the plane. It is hard to do that. It is hard to fly across and get in front of the, you know, the girl or the guy and say, I'm just a girl or guy in front of you wanting you to play quarterback for me. It is hard to do the courting process, especially with a character like Aaron Rodgers. So just the fact that we know Aaron's not washed, he's ready to go, he wants to play again. And we are seeing this Jets brass, the Johnsons and the, you know, the Salas and company and Joe Douglas, that they're making the moves because they want to contend that they say, listen, we got Garrett Wilson. We've got Brees Hall. We've got a top five defense. We have his back. He can do big things in New York and we want to do big things in New York. They pull this off and they bring Aaron Rodgers to New York back on that plane or otherwise. This could be one of the most successful roll dices that we've ever seen in this league. And I just love it for the Jets and that fan base who's super excited.